I grew up at a rural area. I know how to plant plants and I know how to feed animals like a chicken and pig, pig and all those things. And uh, I kind yeah, of know how to catch the fish. So um, it's the difference is like after I grow up, I'm, I, I moved to a city and uh, because China has changed so fast, it's too fast for me. When I go to the primary school, I gradually get out of the, the countryside lifestyle and uh, then start to become a I say urban, I don't know, city boy or something like that. But I still really like the my childhood, the, the experience with like I'm I'm really close to nature. Does religion play a role? No. In life? If you if you think like a, a how to say um, um how to say Marxism or communism mm-hmm. the uh, re- religion or something like that they maybe will play uh mm. will influence people's mind uh, uh, the thought but most of the time we don't have religion mm-hmm. do people pray to your ancestors though yeah we pray to the ancestors like in the particular festival we uh, pray to them but it's not like a religion it's just like a uh show your missing of, about them yeah because i, I talked to um, the artist he's from the countryside of taiwan he was telling me about the most traditional culture yeah. in taiwan like traditionally like chinese culture is religion it's it's the praying to the ancestors but also praying to the gods to ask questions because like before you have to like farm right <laughs> like you know about, about farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Farm. But you don't know the weather so like you don't know how your crops are going to turn out so then you would like go ask the spirits or the gods um, you know like, i understand that part it's like the, the weather's gonna be good today <laughs> it's like in china it's complicated it's because like uh, we still have some guard guard to pray. It's like about we got we uh, like uh, some god they how do say they represent the money some uh, or wealth. Some god okay. represent the uh, and the weather the weather the good weather and uh, some some god represent a, a lot of different things. But the things are like in my family, um, typically like uh, my father he, he went to the college at my age, but it's only very small amount of people they can go to the college and uh, because of the uh, in that period of time China is really complicated and uh, just after the cultural revolution yeah. and people cannot go to there and uh, after cultural revolution my father he's lucky he go to he went to the college and so he kind of believed there's no god and uh, the only thing we trust is Karl Marx the other philosophy from him and uh, he thinks like we believe the science and after my father getting older he started to become more believe the religion or gods or all those things so when i was young he forbid me to believe any religion mm. he thinks like we have to believe scientists but there's no no like celebration around the gods or like parades right but some people they they believe Buddha, some people they believe like mm-hmm. Jesus, some people they believe I think uh, here uh, like, you know, Chinese God, but depends on the different situations. I think there's like some really big like festivals here um, where they take um, the God out of the temple and just like parade around the whole city. <laughs> yeah, like it's it was like really weird when I first it's saw more, it. No, it's like, it, it's more like uh, some some something happened in Japan or in the in the in the Taiwan. It's not something like happening in the yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like a typical like a every Chinese student in the college. We don't have too much choice. Which kind of like discipline we can choose? Like we don't have idea. We just choose like uh, depends on if it's good for earn money or if it's good for a boy have to learn something like engineering, like physics and the math or something, and the girls, they have to learn something, literature. A lot of stereotypes around gender. It's not about if you like it or not. But the good thing is like in my college, it's not that hard to transfer from one college to another college. But in other university, they forbidden, or not forbidden, but it's super hard. They will put a lot of things like against you to change your major. Why did you choose to study abroad? It's like, 
to that one reason is like in America, the school system they support people to change their major. It's okay you you change your major and you apply uh, another discipline and uh, and they are welcome you to have this kind of change because they think the something like a multidiscipline thing is a good, is a better thing so and the people can start to change their ideas and uh, to learn from each other. But in China, they don't support students to change after you figure out if you like it or not. And then they ask you to pay your whole life to take those mistakes, even though they don't give you time to think and think and prepare for it. Yeah, like there's not enough flexibility. Yes. After you got to the US, what was your first impression? Rich. This society is so rich. This country is so rich. It's like all the things we talk about before, about our university, about our society, because we are poor. We don't have money to support people and students and the young people to chase in their own life. In China, we face the same things, like we need to survive. Maybe 10 years ago, we need to survive. Right now, we want to be happy, uh, but still struggling about a lot of things. But in America, you, you don't need to worry about it. And uh, China is rich too, though, right? Now? Uh, now it's rich, but because we have a huge amount of po population, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you separate each other, everyone, it's really small amount. And it's different, it's like, because it's, it's rich because it's like the whole month get together looks a lot, but still less than US. But the population in US, then, not huge, just like a normal. And then you, this this society, this country get huge wealth and a, a super wealth and uh, so it's different. So people don't care about if you like it or not. They only care about if you can or not. If you cannot, just go away and uh, nobody cares. But in US, maybe teachers, they will encourage you, find yourself, you are the best and you have your own something like that, something good. Why those things can happen? Why in the US we embrace a lot of things and we try to have a, like make a lot of things evenly or something like that? And it's because this society is really rich. You, you have chance and the money to do this, even though it's not for one, each one they have their rich, but it's for the whole society, they can do these things. Um, for Baltimore, I don't know. It's like <laughs> it's complicated. Um, it's first word coming out of my mind. It's dangerous. I have been to the several city in the U.S., but Baltimore is the only one I spend a lot of time in that city because we we are all study there. I never imagined is a country can be rich like this and uh, there's some place can be poor or dangerous like that. So it's shocked me. Yeah, it's a mixed feeling right? because I think the longer that I stay in Baltimore I feel like it really is charm city mm -hmm. like there's a certain charm to it yet there's a certain uncertainty but it's a good thing it's because of the situation Baltimore is unique because it's it's a lot of things like you can think about this city why it's it's happened like this why all the things happen here and especially we are in art college so there are a lot of problems they are we are talking about in the school and it sh also shows in in the city it's about gender and identity and the race and all the things happen. But it helps me to understand US or understand this world. Me too. Yeah, and to it helped me to understand this world and in a in a good way, like in a reality. I mean, just it's so real. You have to think about it. If we go to the New York, we went to the San Francisco or Los Angeles. It's more like a city living in a beautiful bubble or something that is everybody is like fancy and beautiful and they only show their good side to you and 
they make up and they prepare themselves very well. But in the Baltimore, it's different. It's mixed. But it's good I have an experience to live there. This city helped me to really start to know what is the truth about the whole world. Before I went to the Baltimore, I'm more like an idealist or something. I don't know. Just like, I think... It's, you know, we are world where it gets better and uh, and there's no place to... To, to suffer and there's no people be hungry and there's nothing, everything is good. Especially in China, we change a lot just in the past 20 or 30 years. You need to hold on to that mm-hmm. good intention. Yes, yeah. But it's very, very difficult. And I think the best way to go about it is still to do what you can around you in that immediate environment. In the China, in the rural area, that's still really nice and safe. And uh, people, they are still, even though they're poor, they still be a re- decent people. In China, it's like no matter you are rich or poor, or to create a safe environment. Uh, a neighborhood is for everybody. To get uh, education is so expensive in the U.S. That's the things like. Mm-hmm. But there are a lot of things I don't know. I'm just I'm still trying to figure out because it's like, the it, gap, though. It's it's the wealth gap. It's people on top wanting to contain their power. Mm-hmm, yes. They want to preserve their power, so then um, they want the gap to widen. So poor is poor, rich is richer. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And it's not gonna be any more equal because if it's more equal, that means everyone is gonna compete for the same resources. Yeah, yeah, I agree with this. Because yeah. like in China it's like after we suffered like second world war and the civil war and the we build a new count I say country, right? New government. And, yeah. Everybody seems like, no matter you you was rich or you was poor, we are right now at the same level, and we get the education and we start to go up, and uh, so in my parents' that generation, a lot of things is really equal and uh, it really, but in our generation, the situation starts to change and become more like a Western. It's like education is start to not, I say. It's become really not equal and like I live in the rural area and uh, why I get education? I don't know how, how other people get education. I just uh, go to the primary school and learn the course from primary school and go to the middle school and learn something from the teacher. But the people in our city, they live in a good area when they go to the primary school and they use three years or four years to finish all the course in the primary school and then they have two years left and they start to learn the middle school's course and when they went to the middle school and they start to learn the high school course so and when they go to high school they already know everything and they have more three years to prepare for the final exam and they start to spend more time to learn english and to prepare the college they learn everything before you before the normal student with a wealthy family and they build their how to say elite they use this kind of um, way to to catch the the resource and to 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 build the their own neighborhood and I understand that after I graduated from the college and I talked with my high school mate and they told me like all those things I don't know before I mean just like it's totally shocked me because like they, their parents, they have money and uh, they have this kind of, it's also not about money, about ideas. Their parents knows they have to spend more money for their children's education. And they did. And their children do get the better education. They can remain or stay in their social level, be the, be the, how is it, be the elite again. But for the people from the rural area or, for, or from the work class or from the not that wealthy family, they don't know those things or they think like, oh, my kids, they go to the school and they have to learn by themselves. And then if they cannot get a good score because they're not uh, study hard enough, 
No, it's not true. It's like they have to study hard at the same time. How many money you put in it, and、uh, how good the teacher you can get, and、uh, what kind of environment you build for your kids. It depends on how, what kind of university they can go. It's super expensive. It's 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 not cheap than go to、uh, study in the U.S. It's kind of like maybe will be more expensive. In here in China, it's more competitive. After you came to the U.S.,、um, what was your biggest struggle? Language. Feels like my English is really not good. I and you know. You know, no. and、uh, so language is is always the most difficult thing for me. And another thing is like I don't know. I don't want to say something not political, right? <laughs> But I noticed something like it's different. The people make friends at U.S. compared to the people in the China. We use different way to make friends. It's like in China. It's like we will become close. Very, I would say, take a long time, and、uh, we will not be that nice when we meet each other at the first time. We are really close, and everybody keep a distance with each other, and then we start to become more close and become become friends, and then we will figure out which one, which people you want to. Meet. Get together, was want to make friends, and if you don't like somebody, and then you still keep a distance with them. But in US, it's not the same thing. It's like they look really nice that first time, and、uh, after for a while, they still look nice at the same at the same. <laughs> Looks the same, and,、uh, and then they keep distance in another way. It's like they used to be nice to keep a distance with you. And uh, and uh, you don't know how they really think about you if they don't show it out. <laughs> After you take a really long time to know them, and you are found okay, they are be nice with you at the same time say a lot of bad words behind you. They don't show it out, but in China, if you don't like somebody and you show it, it's like okay. We are not the same people. We just keep a distance. We are not in the same group. We just show respect to each other and then don't make trouble. Don't make each other feel uncomfortable. But in in here, no, it's it just it's another thing. It's like you already show I don't. Okay, please keep a distance with me. And they still like ah、uh, pretend we are so good. No, we are not. Something like this is like、uh, bother me. Or something like that. <laughs> And、uh, yes, and、uh, but that's like, but but、uh, but I after I stay、uh, living in the U.S. for a while, I feel a lot of similarity. Like people is all the same. It's like a human being is all is all the same. But we just use the different kind of way to show the same things out. Because you have. You have a Chinese community at Mica, right? Yes, yes. And yes. how do you feel like that has helped you?、Mm-hmm. Helped you like survive in, in yeah <laughs> in Baltimore.、Mm-hmm. Uh, the thing is, like uh, uh, at the beginning of、uh, when I came to the U.S., I was trying to make some friends, no match. Where they come from, and、uh, no matter no matter how what kind of language they speak, and I found it super hard. And、uh, I I tried about one about one half year to to get more friends from from different region, different area, and, and they speak different kind of language. But I found out like no, it's super hard. And then I gradually to stay in my Chinese group because I don't know. Have you ever noticed that in our school there are a lot of Chinese students, even though they went to the U.S. when they're really young, maybe at high school or in college, they still stay with the, their own community, like Asia community or Chinese community. 
And I went to the U.S. when I was in the graduate school. I tried to have a more diversity about my friends. <laughs> I don't know. But I, I feel, I feel, I'm still trying, I feel. To fall back to what's familiar. It's about culture. It's about language. It's about patience. They, they really don't have too many people. They have patience to speak with somebody. They use English as a second language. Especially people as their first language, mother language, they don't have patience to waiting for you to explain yourself well. And uh, so I only met no more five people in the Micah. I, I met like uh, American people, no more five. They have patience to talk with me, to have a deeply conversation. Do you feel like it's easier to talk to international students who um, are not from China? Yeah. It's also much easier to talk with international students, no matter what they are first language. If we all use the English, and the English or our second language, we have a really good relationship, and we can communicate with each other, and uh, we have patience to waiting for each other to explain ourselves, and because like, pretty much like we can talk about everything using our, like you know my English, I can use this kind of English to discuss everything. Why I cannot use my English to talk with native mm-hmm. speaker? What is your view on Chinese Americans? Like my view, you Chinese Americans? Yeah, like you, we've sort of had conversations about this before. I don't meet too many Chinese Americans. You like about three people or something like that, but you more like America. And the other two, they're more like a Chinese. <laughs> like, even though they are born at the U.S., but they, this is like, there's no difference between me and the other two guys. But I can feel you more like America. It's like if people, ABC, can we call it like this? Mm-hmm. Or Chinese a whole, or Asia born at uh, America. If they're more like uh, American people, and I will treat like American people. If they're more like a Chinese, I just treat them more like Chinese. Like I don't really feel they are like a like a third group. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to know more, but the things like sometimes I'm just too busy. Like okay, I meet some people, and if we can talk and we can be friends and let's be friends. If it's really hard and you really takes a lot of time, okay, never mind. It's okay. Sometimes that is just comes down to time like sometimes I feel like it's not that I don't want to spend time with this friend but it's that I'm so busy like I'm just so busy trying to figure out like myself and my work Uh um that you you have very um limited spare time left over (laughs) to figure out what you want to do with that spare time and sometimes it's just to like relax yourself sometimes um maybe you go out with a couple of friends but it's it's it all comes down to time management how do you work with what you have earlier um you talked about like your reaction to chinatown (laughs) okay like let's talk about chinatown in the manhattan uh because like different cities they have different kind of chinatown it's also in the U.S. The, uh, like Hollywood movie, like Chinatown. They're always like a really poor place and dirty. So I saw be shocked. Like, okay, the environment is really not good. But why? In China, we are not like this. And then I start to think about it. It's about like a different generation and the, what kind of people they move to there. And uh, because like maybe first or second generation. They moved to there because of the war. Yeah. And then they be moved to there because of the war and uh, or something like survive. They are not in a good situation. So they go there, they build that kind of place. And uh, because of they are in the white Western world, they are not majority. They are, mm. it's super hard for them really to survive there, so the situation they live in there is different. 
And it's also about money, it's about wealth. And then, in, like right now, the our generation, we move to there. The people can go there because we are rich. And we go there to be the college and uh, to be the university, to be the graduate school or get doctor. The people to move there, we change. And uh, it's different compared to the people move to there before. And right now you can feel like in the Chinatown, the food is changed. It's not controlled by the Dim Sui or some really Guangdongist food. Right now it's from Sichuan, Shanxi, Hubei, Hunan. Every region in China, the food, the new generation bring to there. And we start to build really fancy restaurant. We build fancy food and we like, like, like the new movie, like a like crazy rich Chinese uh, Asia or something like that. Like that, a lot of people like think like the 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 new Chinese student, they're they're rich and they're crazy rich Chinese guy kids. There's something like that. They change because like the situation different, and uh, because we need different things, and we start to change the impression about Asia people. Because like when I talk with some American people, they think okay. The, it's really changed a lot, especially for the for students to go to the American. There is not like the um, Asian Asian people living in the American. They they're really different. Yeah, no, and it's, it's just so funny hearing you like talk about these things today because some of what you said today is the exact context mm -hmm. of um, that documentary that I filmed. Oh, what, what is it? Right, like, I, I found the documentary for my thesis, right? Uh -huh. That is talking about, um, well, it's in like, like three parts, but the first part is about um, study abroad experience. The second part is about stereotypes mm -hmm. and, um, and then like how China has changed over the years. Mm -hmm. And then the third part is about the cultural revolution. But like, I interviewed four um, like MICA students and the like just the, the context of our conversations was really similar to the uh -huh. things that you um, that we talked about today. Yeah. Uh, uh, which I'm 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 sort of surprised because like we don't plan it before. Right? This is not planned at all. <laughs> it is feels like everything happened. It's always related to history, and yeah. everything we talk, we have to find the reason. And the reason is it's about all those things happened before. And uh, I become like this. It's not only me, it's about a lot of things. So that's why when we talk about my life and we were related to a lot of those things. I think you're right. Like it is, we're all connected to history in that way. It's, it's just really interesting seeing that across like different people. Okay, so this front, like she didn't know what the cultural revolution was at all. Mm -hmm. And is that common among um, your generation? Like, I guess like most of people, they know what is cultural revolution. If they don't know, probably they be protected. By protected. Oh. It's like they don't want to talk with them. But even though my parents, they don't really want to talk about that period of time. Mm -hmm. But I still can hear some little thing or some little information from our daily conversation, just like a little, but they don't really want to talk about that period of time. But after I graduate, I have my curiosity and I start to know. And uh, there are a lot of like literature or a lot of things like, even though in the, in some period of time, we talk about this event during the class, but in the in college mm -hmm. and uh, there are a lot of people interesting about this it's good like he he or she his parents want to protect him 